students need to take in a lot of information in a really short period of time. So we borrowed this thing from our friends in the humanities called the analogy, which takes really big idea and break them down into something that is actually comprehensible to the average human being. It takes something like this. Well, to understand how a MOSFET conducts current in a saturation region, you have to look closely at what's happening here. In here, this is the depletion region, and over here, this is the inversion layer. Now, you wonder how current can flow across here, uh, given that there are no electrons here in the depletion layer. Well, it turns out that the electric field uh, peaks in this region. Most of the voltage here, when it's 1.5 volts on the drain, is dropped across this depletion region, which accelerates the electron across. And turns it into something like this. <laughs> So we have uh, Matt, the electron over there, and we have Andrew and Ken, who stuck us the trench, you know, deep into the center of the Earth. So if Matt was just to walk across, he would fall into the trench and be engulfed in lava. End of Matt. But okay, that's <laughs> <laughs> Matt. Now what happens in the MOSFET is um, on on my end here there's a giant vacuum that's going to pull Matt across across the trench. <laughs> so now is how Matt has come across and the electron has flowed and we have current. So this is how a MOSFET works. You can stop your phone. Or it takes something like this. The flux of a vector through a closed surface is equal to the volume integral of the divergence over a region inside that surface. And turns it into something like this. Just go to the bathroom and let the water run through your faucet. Now imagine there is a shape like a sphere or a cube enclosing this faucet that the water can just freely pass through. The flux is the total amount of water that is passing through the surface of this shape for any given amount of time. What Divergence Theorem says is that there are two ways of finding out how much liquid is being produced by this source of water. The first thing is that we can count up all the faucets, in this case one, and find out how much water is coming out of this imaginary shape. That's what the volume integral on the left is saying. Another thing we can do is to look at how much water is coming out of each point along the boundary of this shape, and add them all up. That's what the surface integral on the right is saying. Of course we can take formal mathematical definitions at face value and just believe in it, but analogies help us get a more intuitive understanding of things that are really unintuitive. And often in electrical engineering, we must deal with things that are really microscopically small, like electrons in a semiconductor, or things that aren't even visible, like the electric field lines that are coming out of a conductive surface. And one of the keys to good engineering, I think, is having an intuition to recognize similar patterns. So if you understand how water flows through a faucet, then you can also understand how electric flux works. I'm going to end this episode with a quote from my favorite science writer, Carl Sagan. If you wish to make an apple pie from scratch, you must first invent the universe. Thank you very much.